This is Money Guide with Mary Stirk from Stirk Financial Services. Now, here's Mary Stirk. Welcome to Money Guide with Mary Stirk. And today we're talking about spring cleaning your finances. I tell you what, when I go outside and the weather is so nice right now and I see the buds blooming and I see green leaves on trees. I see flowers starting to poke their heads up. For most people, probably the last thing you wanna talk about is spring cleaning your finances. But this is actually a really good time to tap into that good springy vibe, that new life kind of new energy vibe, and really dig into those piles of clutter that have built up over the last few months or the last few years, and really dig in there and just spring clean out those finances. There really is quite a few benefits that come from spring cleaning your finances. And one of them is that it can save you some money. And what I mean by that is that when you actually take a good look at things, frequently you're gonna spot some things where you're spending money that you either forgot about or didn't intend to be, and you can cut that. So more money in your pocket for other fun stuff that you wanna spend it on. The other thing though about spring cleaning is that just simply the act of tidying up really does give you an emotional lift. So it just kind of cleans out your spirits at the same time as you're cleaning out your clutter. <laughs> the last thing is that it also prevents problems from building up or happening. So there might be something that you have sitting on your desk that you need to address or an envelope that you haven't even opened yet that needs a signature. And by not doing those things, you could be causing yourself a problem further down the line. So spring cleaning your finances has loads of benefits. I want to dive into a handful of things that I think are going to be great for people to do that don't take a tremendous amount of time, that don't feel like you would rather pluck out your eyelashes instead of having to do this kind of stuff and actually can make a difference for you. None of these things take a massive amount of time and so you can knock one or two of them out on a weekend day or you can knock one or two of them out of an evening and still get out there and enjoy the beautiful spring weather happening all around us. So let's talk about what some of these financial tips are for spring cleaning your finances. The first one that I wanna talk about is this, review your beneficiaries. You know, you love who you love, your people are your people. And for most people, that's our families. And in the last year or so, what we've all gone through with the pandemic, what I can say is that family is even more important than ever. So why not take this as a good time just to review your beneficiaries and make sure that your family is connected to your finances in the way that you really want it to be. What do I mean by that? Well, let's talk about beneficiaries for a second. A primary beneficiary is who is gonna get your money if something happens to you. A contingent beneficiary is who gets the money if someone like you and your primary beneficiaries are all dead. So the contingent doesn't get it until they're kind of a ways on that lineup. But here's the thing, when it comes to beneficiary planning, you really want to set it up to make sure that you're getting the money to those that you love and that you don't forget somebody. Because the last thing you want to do is after you're dead and gone, have your family realize you accidentally left someone out that you really did care about. And this is the right time in spring to go take a look at those things. One of the things about beneficiary planning that people don't always think about is how that can actually help with your taxes too. So being a financial planner, I'm always thinking about strategic tax planning for people. And a lot of people like to wind charitable giving into their estate planning. And what I mean by that is a lot of people like to leave money to charities that resonate to them, resonate with them, matter to them during their lifetime. They want to leave a financial legacy when they're gone. And there's actually some strategies surrounding how to do that. Some ways are better than others. For instance, one of the better ways to think about leaving money to a charity is money that hasn't been taxed yet. So an IRA might be left to a charity or at least a partial beneficiary to a charity. So let's say you picked your favorite university or your favorite charity to leave some money to. If you put the IRA beneficiary as that charity, they as a nonprofit do not pay taxes when they receive that money. However, if you left the same amount of money to your child, 
your child is going to pay taxes on that money. So if you have an IRA and you have life insurance, it might be better to leave the IRA to a charity and the life insurance, which doesn't have any tax implications to your beneficiary, you might want to leave that to your children. And then it's the best of both worlds. The most money gets to be passed around in the, in the world and the least amount of taxes gets taken out. So spring cleaning tip, let's review those beneficiaries and get them aligned with what matters most to you. Second spring cleaning tip is update your subscriptions. I know that sounds kind of funny, but what is happening out there in the world right now is that people have so many digital automatic subscriptions to things that they forget that they're there. And then once they have paid for the next renewal or annual fee, they kind of forget to go turn it off for the next time. So I'm going to give you a prime example of what has happened for me. I am a diehard uh, musicals fan. So I love musicals. I love going to musicals. I love listening to musicals. I like listening to the soundtracks. I've loved musicals since I was a little kid. And one of the musicals that I just fell in love with in the more recent years has been Hamilton. And I had a chance to go see Hamilton in Chicago and I had a chance to go see Hamilton in Omaha. Both times were absolutely fantastic. Love the soundtrack, love the musical. And Disney Plus and Hamilton did a deal where they were going to televise Hamilton as a movie. And I was like, great, awesome. That will be really fun to see it because I can maybe just get a different vantage point from wherever I was sitting in the audience. Well, this, to be able to watch Hamilton, you had to sign up for Disney Plus. And so I did that. And it's something like $7.99 a month or something like that. Anyway, I signed up for it for the month and then completely forgot about it after I watched Hamilton that I, I really should be canceling my Disney Plus subscription because I'm not likely to go watch anything else on that channel. But instead, now here we are like eight or nine months later and I still am paying $7.99 a month for Disney Plus because they haven't canceled it yet. <laughs> so I need to do that kind of financial spring cleaning. Go review those subscriptions. It's a prime example of wasting money and how even though it's eight bucks a month, not really a big hardship, it's still wasted money. It's still money that's not really aligned with how I want to spend my hard earned cash and what I wanna be spending money on. So that's a good example of what to look for. So go through your subscriptions, go through magazines, go through digital subscriptions, go to your Prime account if you have Amazon Prime and click on subscriptions and see what all is listed to pay through Prime that you have as a subscription that's auto paying through there. You might be surprised at what you find and what you save. Okay, next tip for financial spring cleaning is review your insurance policies. Now, there's all kinds of insurance out there, but the reality is that insurance is really the foundation of good financial planning. Insurance is there to fill the gaps and to pass the risk on to someone else. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you insure your car, you're paying a small amount of money so that if there is an accident, the insurance company will pay you a big amount of money. So you're passing on the risk of the large dollars to the insurance company instead of having that risk owned by yourself. So if we want to make sure that our risk is passed off in the best possible way and that our foundation of insurance is solid, there's a handful of different insurance types that you want to look at. And this is a perfect time just to make sure you have all your insurance ducks in a row. So review your auto insurance. Make sure that it's up to date. Make sure that you have enough coverage. Review your homeowner's insurance. Make sure that your replacement costs on your homeowner insurance is at a number that actually could replace your home if something happened to it. Take a look at whether or not you need an umbrella policy. Now, general rule of thumb, if your net worth is approaching a million dollars, you might want to put an umbrella liability policy on for a million dollars. Now, that is something that sits on top of the auto and home insurance and adds additional protection. You don't need it unless you have big enough net worth, but once you get there, it's an important part of your coverage. Another thing to take a look at is disability insurance. Do you have disability coverage through your work or is it something that you need to have on your own? Is the amount of disability coverage you have still enough? Is it aligned with the income that you have right now? And then finally, life insurance. 
Is your life insurance the right amount for where you are in life right now? Has your life changed in the last year? Have you bought a house? Have you changed debt levels? Have you had a child? Has your child gone off and gotten married and maybe no longer on your payroll? Your life insurance needs change as your life changes. So this is a good time to look at those insurance policies and make absolutely sure that the coverages that you have in place are the right type for you right now. Okay, when we come back from our break, I'm going to keep talking about some good financial spring cleaning tips that will help you clear up the clutter and make life a little more tidy. Congratulations to Mary Stirk and the team at Stirk Financial for earning a spot on two Forbes lists. Four years running for the Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisors and three years on the Forbes Top Women in Wealth list. Welcome back to Money Guide with Mary Stirk, where today we're talking about financial spring cleaning. We've talked about reviewing your beneficiaries, updating your subscriptions. We've talked about looking at your life insurance policies and how all of these things really can kind of help clear the clutter and move you to a better place financially. Let's keep going with these things. Financial spring cleaning is a great time to reevaluate your tax withholdings. So you probably have just come off getting your taxes done or you're pretty close to having them done. You either got a refund or you had to pay. <laughs> More than likely one of those two situations is what happened for you. So take this as an opportunity to adjust the withholdings. You know, if you have a huge refund that's coming to you, maybe you don't need to withhold quite as much because in essence, you're giving Uncle Sam a tax-free loan, an interest-free loan of your money during the year, just so you can get it all back in a refund. Conversely, if you have to pay, you may wanna go ahead and up those withholdings so it's not such a nasty surprise in come tax time. So think about adjusting your withholdings right now in order to align with where your income levels and taxation levels are currently. Another thing is to automate your savings. So if you have goals of building your wealth, if you have goals of building your savings, then the financial spring cleaning time is really a great time to dig in and automate increased savings to those. So here's some ways to do that. One thing is this is a great time to connect with your 401k company and up the amount that you're putting in. Now, not all companies let you do it every single month or every single quarter. It depends on your company's rules, but take this as an opportunity to put the orders into place so that when you can, you can increase the amount that you're putting into your 401k. Even if you're just increasing it by 1% a year, you're moving in the right direction. Another thing about savings that can be automated is automated savings into things like savings accounts. Now there's some really cool apps out there if you're a little bit more techy that can actually help with this. There are apps out there that you can connect to your financial accounts that do things like this. Every time I spend X dollars at a store, put $5 into my savings account. So I see people building their savings using the Starbucks method. <laughs> what it says is every time you see a charge to Starbucks, put $5 into my savings account. You know, and it's things like that, that little baby steps can lead to big, broad results for people and are so worth putting in place. So automating your savings is a great tip when it comes to financial spring cleaning. Another thing is to really check in on your financial goals. You know, life has a tendency to get busy. Life has a tendency to just keep moving whether we're paying attention or not. And the reality is this, our financial goals need to be paid attention to and checked in with every once in a while. So if you have a goal, take your financial spring cleaning timeframe as an opportunity to just check in to see where you're at with things. Are you on track with your savings? Are you on track to retire early? Do you need to build a new plan to be able to hit the goals that are important to you? Whatever your goal is, use this as a time to just check in and see where you're at with your goals. And if you're on pace, awesome. And if you're not on pace, put that plan into place to help you move closer to them. Okay, the next thing that I wanna talk about in terms of financial goals is looking at your cash flow. So I'm not even gonna talk about the word budget. That's like the B word in our office. <laughs> I am gonna talk about looking at unusual expenses though. 
So one of the things that happens for many people is you kind of go along in your daily life and you're spending money, your cash flow works pretty well on a month to month basis, a day to day basis, a week to week basis, however you want to look at it. But it's the unusual expenses that sometimes trip people up or that you forget about and all of a sudden it's kind of an uncomfortable surprise. So take your financial spring cleaning as a time to look for the rest of the year to say, what's coming up for me the rest of this year that are larger or unusual expenses? And do I have that cash flow set aside? Do I have a plan for how to handle that particular expense? You will be doing yourself a favor when it comes time to write those checks and you'll be glad that you factored that into your planning. Okay, another thing that I wanna talk about when it comes to financial spring cleaning is we want to talk about your asset allocation. Okay, so now don't let your eyes glaze over <laughs> or your hearing turn off. Let's talk about asset allocation for just a minute. This doesn't have to be scary. This doesn't have to be something that even takes a long time. What I mean by asset allocation in terms of financial spring cleaning is this. Take a look at your money and just make sure you're still comfortable with the risk levels inside of it. Make sure that if it's money you're going to use in the short term, it's very conservative. And if it's money that you're not going to use for quite some time, that it's whatever risk level that you feel comfortable with. Listen, the last thing that you want to have happen is right before you go to take money that you need for something important, that the market crashes and all of a sudden it's less. So how do you avoid that from happening? You pay attention to asset allocation. You make sure the amount of risk in your money is aligned with the time frame that you're going to use it. That's the important piece of this. So what does that mean? Can you do it yourself? Absolutely. And if you can't, if it's not something you're comfortable with, then use this financial spring cleaning time as an opportunity to reach out to your financial advisor or give an advisor at my firm a call and let's talk about your risk levels. Let's talk about your asset allocation and make sure that we get that to the place that's right for you so that you can check that box off, off of your financial spring cleaning. All right, another tip for spring cleaning that you can do, and again, this can be done pretty quickly, pretty easily, is to review your credit score. Every once in a while, it's a good idea to just check in with this. And you know, one of the things that's been happening more and more and more out in the world is identity theft. And I bet there's not anyone listening who hasn't gotten some notification from a company that they've worked with, that they've had an account with that says, oh, such and such company has been breached and we're gonna give you free identity theft protection for a year because of it. Some stuff like that. That's becoming so commonplace now. So use this spring cleaning as an opportunity to check that credit score. Go out and look and make sure that all of the debts, all of the credit cards, all of the accounts that are open really are yours. Make sure that they're right. It's also a good time to look at that score and say, is my score where I want it to be? Or are there some things that I could or should be doing to improve my score so that I have better credit going forward? So financial spring cleaning tip, this is a good time to take a look at both of those things. I highly encourage it. All right, another tip when it comes to financial spring cleaning is to create a simple method for tracking your numbers that matter. You know, I'm kind of a research geek sometimes. I like to read books. I like to read books about self-development. And, and one of the better books that I read was called Atomic Habits by James Clear. Atomic Habits by James Clear. And in this book, what he did spend some time talking about was tracking the things that matter. So if there's something that matters to you, and if it matters enough, it's probably worth tracking it somehow. So if perhaps retiring early is something that matters to you, then tracking your financial progress to getting there is something that you should be doing. If paying off debt is something that matters to you, then tracking your debt payoff progress could be tracked. Whatever it is that has a number assigned to it, the best habits are surrounded by a good, simple tracking method. 
So I would highly encourage you to pick out what are the things that make the most sense you want to track and then set up some type of reminder so that you look at that on a regular basis. Now, I don't mean you have to look at it every day or every week, but maybe it's something where you have a monthly reminder pop up on your phone just to go check where you're at with your debt payoff or just to go check what, how your accounts are doing. Whatever it is that matters to you, a simple, clear, easy tracking system is a great plan when it comes to financial spring cleaning. All right, the last thing that I wanna talk about is your documents. And this is the one that is probably just kind of like the ickiest for people because most people look at a pile of paperwork and just wanna keep it shoved off to the side of a desk and don't wanna do anything with it. But let's dig into this one for just a minute. What if you took a two hour time block and you just burn through that paperwork that you need to burn through? You take your old files, you figure out what you need to keep and what you can shred and get rid of. You go through the envelopes on your desk and figure out which ones you do need to open and which ones you can just go ahead and toss. So here's the thing with your files. The paperwork matters to the extent of not missing something and to staying abreast of what's happening in your financial life. And, and that's not the fun stuff to take care of. And it's not fun to open an envelope and file a statement in a file. But at the end of the day, if you notice something that's wrong, you will have saved yourself time and money, most likely, in having to fix a problem that went on too long. So that's why it's important to kind of dig in and clean up some of that old paperwork or clean out some of that old paperwork. In any event, I hope that this has been valuable information to you as you approach your spring cleaning. And I hope that tidying up the clutter and opening up some space in your life feels really good. So thanks for listening to Money Guide with Mary Stirk. The views expressed are not necessarily the opinion of your audio provider and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities or services mentioned herein. Investing is subject to risks, including loss of principal invested. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. No strategy can ensure a profit nor protect against loss. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should only be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Securities and investment advisory services are offered through Woodbury Financial Services Incorporated. Member FINRA SIPC. Insurance offered through Sterk Financial Services, which is not affiliated with Woodbury Financial Services Incorporated. Neither Woodbury Financial Services Incorporated nor its representatives provide tax or legal advice. You should consult a qualified attorney or tax professional to answer your specific questions. Sterk Financial Services is located at 350 Oak Tree Lane, Suite 150, Dakota Dunes, South Dakota, 57049 and can be reached at 605-217-3555. Forbes Best in State Wealth Advisors list includes 10 recipients per state. The award is based on qualitative and quantitative data, rating thousands of wealth advisors with a minimum of seven years of experience and weighing factors like revenue trends, assets under management, compliance records, industry experience, and best practices. The award is not based on portfolio performance or client reviews. There is no fee in exchange for rankings. Third-party rankings and recognitions are no guarantee of future investment success and do not ensure that a client or prospective client will experience a higher level of performance or results. These ratings should not be construed as an endorsement of the advisor by any client nor are they representative of any one client's evaluation.